Welcome back to Pilot Stack. We have a pretty unusual video for you today. We're going to look at a windmilling uh, glide and a windmilling start. So the video is going to start at uh, over Petaluma Airport, which is a small uh, Northern California airport. It's going to be about 4,500 feet. We're going to be flying a Piper Cherokee today, a uh, pretty conventional four-seater single engine. It has a Lycoming 0360 in it, so your pretty conventional uh, family airplane. Uh, going to start with a basic glide first. We've all done that. So pitch is going to be level. Power goes to idle. Uh, trim, stabilize. Going to use about 70 knots airspeed. Vertical speed is going to go to yeah, five, six hundred foot a minute. You know, pretty comfortable glide, which we've all done and this looks looks great. Now we get into some of the unusual things next. Uh, going to go to idle cutoff. Idle cutoff is going to basically turn the engine off. So we've all shut down engines on the ground going to idle cutoff. The engine stops. Here I'm going to go to idle cutoff, stop the fuel, and the propeller does not stop. Why? It's windmilling. In other words, the airflow going past the propeller is strong enough to continue to uh, go take the engine through the compression stroke and it continues to rotate. The performance difference you're going to see is minimal. In other words, glide speed, vertical speed really doesn't change too much. Maybe 100 foot per minute uh, vertical speed, more descent. So almost insignificant. So when you're out there in the real world and you mismanage your fuel, you forget to change your fuel tanks, you run out of gas, in all probability the engine will not stop. It's just going to be this slow RPM rotation. Then we go to the next level. I'm going to stop the propeller. So the engine's already stopped. There's no fuel. How am I going to stop the prop? I'm going to pitch the airplane up, slow the airspeed down to get as little airflow past the prop as possible to stop it. And for most airplanes, the Cherokee is pretty typical. I'm going to have to take it all the way into a stall. So you're going to see the stall buffet. You're going to have stall warning come on. And right about the point the airplane's in a fairly aggressive stall, the prop stops. And I reset the pitch. Uh, vertical speed is going to be pretty high because I just did a stall. So it's going to be descending off that, uh, that stall configuration. And after it settles down, same pitch, same airspeed, vertical speed, about the same. So no huge performance difference between a windmilling propeller, no power, and a stopped propeller. Been lots of articles and videos recently talking about the difference between the two. Uh, I'm of the opinion. You're out there in the real world. You had an engine failure. Uh, the last thing you want to do is, well, let's see, I'm going to extend that glide by X team distance by st stalling the airplane first with my family on board. Uh, crazy. So it does not make sense to me. Then we're going to wrap up with, I'm going to get the engine started again without the starter. Well, why would I do that? Well, maybe my electrical system failed. Maybe my starter failed. i got to get this engine started somehow. So how am I going to do it? I'm just going to pitch down. As I pitch down, airspeed is going to build. A lot of airspeed is going to build. I'm going to go from about 70 knots all the way up to 140 knots. Uh, vertical speed is going to get very, very high. I'm going to lose well over 1,000 foot a minute until finally there's enough airflow going past that propeller to be stronger than the compression stroke of the pistons. And the prop comes back up to speed. And I forgot to mention the mixture is back full ridge, so it will start once I get rotation. So um, pretty, uh, I don't want to say dangerous maneuver, but it is something I absolutely don't want you practicing this one at home, folks. Um, I'm almost encouraging don't even practice with your flight instructor because he probably he or she probably doesn't have a lot of experience. They've never done this before. This is not an FAA flight test maneuver. It's not in any textbook. It's not in any um, owner's manual, POH type of material. Uh, and I'm just kind of being your test spot so you can kind of see what it's like. So you can, if you, for some reason, you ever found yourself in this situation, you can say, well, I know I could start the engine again, but notice where I am. I'm over an airport the whole time. So if something went wrong and I couldn't get the engine started, I would just glide into the Petaluma Airport and land, and it'd be no big deal. Anyway, sit back, enjoy the video, and I'll see you up at 4,500 feet in the cockpit. Thanks. Okay, well, welcome back to Pilot Stack. We're in flight. We're up 
up at uh, 4,500 feet. Got kind of a slow cruise here going, about 95 knots. This is going to be a demonstration of a glide with propeller windmilling and then with the propeller stopped and then an attempted restart without the starter. So I'm presently uh, coming up on the Oscar 69 Airport, which is Petaluma, which is uh, just about three miles ahead of me. So, as we said before, you are not going to try this one at home. Uh, my safety precautions, a beautiful day out here. Got a nice suitable runway underneath us, so for some reason if this engine doesn't restart, uh, I've got a good place to land. Okay, so to get this thing set up, I'm going to go into a power-off glide. Super dry air here in Northern California today, but just for procedure, I'm going to bring car heat on. Power goes back to idle. Best glide speed for this airplane is 73 knots at max gross weight. I'm pretty light today, just by myself, and uh, probably less than half fuel. I'm going to take about 70 knots, should be our weight-adjusted glide speed. Right, there's my 70 knots. Vertical speed stable here at about 600 foot a minute. Picture just went to idle cutoff. Drop RPMs dropping down a few hundred RPM. Basically same vertical speed. Maybe increased uh, about 100 or so. Okay, I'm going to go to stop the prop. Basically, I'm going to take it into the stall warning, then into the stall. Do what it takes to stop that prop. Stall warning just came on. There's my stall buffet. My stall buffet. And there's the prop stopped. Take it back to my 70. Pretty high vertical speed right now, because it's coming off the uh, low flight stall situation. Try to get that 70 knot stabilized. Vertical speed still fairly high, coming through 800 foot a minute. Might be a no significant change in glide speed or glide vertical speed. That's starting to shallow up a little bit. And there it is back to about 650, 600 to 700 foot per minute. Okay, let's restart it. Mixture goes rich. Not going to touch the starter, and I'm just going to dive. Here we go. Pitch right on down. Fill that airspeed up. There's up through 90. Starting to get rotation. There's 100. 110. There's 120. It's trying. It's trying. There's 130. There's 135. And and engine just start again. Yeah, I know. Four flights calling out a sink rate. So it took a lot of airspeed to get it. A lot of altitude loss. But uh, it worked. So the takeaway is, don't try this at home. Okay, the next takeaway is, uh, will stop the prop make a significant difference in the uh, vertical speed to give it a further glide distance? No. Okay, traffic in sight. And to restart the prop takes tremendous amount of vertical speed. Lose a lot of altitude. Takes a lot of forward air speed to get that prop going again, but it is possible to restart the engine without uh, engaging the starter. Okay, well, put that one uh, in your back pocket or make that a pilot stack item. That uh, yes, it is possible to restart an engine from a windmill situation only without the starter. Thanks again, and uh, Please hit those like buttons, and we sure could use those subscribers on Pilot Stack. So we'll catch you next time. Bye.